my teacher, UAE's biggest classroom. Good evening and welcome to yet another episode of NTV's My Teacher. In the last episode, we had discussed about the ill effects of social media in our children's lives. We had received uh, overwhelming response for the same. Thank you, viewers. Please do continue sending your feedbacks and comments to us. In today's episode, we shall look into the other side of the picture. Uh, we shall check out the positive effects of social media in our children's lives. As I say, we shouldn't paint the devil blacker than it is. So we shall look into the positive effects plus the strategies that parents can adopt in order to maximize the benefits and minimize the risks involved in their children's lives. Um, to do that, let me welcome our subject matter expert, Dr. Sangeet Ibrahim, to the show. Good evening, Doctor. Um, thank you, Sunana. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, brothers and sisters, good evening and a very warm welcome to this program. As always, it's indeed a pleasure. And yes, the feedback on uh, uh, our social media platform about the last session was quite overwhelming. Absolutely. And uh, we are so happy that uh, you know we could dispense some useful information to our viewers, and and so glad to be part of the NTV family. Uh, so yes, it's a pleasure, and I'm looking forward to uh, um, facilitating a value-adding discussion this time as well. Pleasure, uh, Doctor. I think that um, um, if we want our children to become competent individuals in today's digital age. Mm -hmm. Uh, we should help them leverage the benefits of social media to the maximum. Mm -hmm. What are your po thoughts on the positive effects of social media in our children? Oh yes, last time as you said we, we probably painted the devil a little too uh, darker than <laughs> what it should be. Uh, well as you said you know it, it's got positive effects and it has got ill effects as well. It's up to us to, to, to make sure that we optimize the usage uh, so that we can maximize the benefits of the platform. Right. You know, you just can't keep your children off this platform for long. Uh, um, I would say the number one benefits is in terms of learning. Uh, when we were small, we learned from our teachers, uh, to an extent from our parents. I I'm talking about academic uh, uh, learning and also from our friends a bit. We had encyclopedias, we used to frequent libraries and also read newspapers. But now, with the kind of information that's available online, I think uh, students can learn from a plethora of sources. Yeah, and, and they can learn uh, uh, new information in very interesting ways. Uh, Sunana, as a trainer, you know, previously we used to go and because we used to read extensively, we had some uh, information that only we had. Okay, so we used to go and give anecdotes and mention codes and talk about authors and people used to say, wow, you know, because they uh, probably would be hearing that for the first time. Right. But now with the advent of social media and uh, the, the extensive reach that it has, the you problem is, uh, off, exactly, yeah. you don't have, well, it's not showing off, you don't have any fresh content anymore. You know, you, you build a story up with a lot of enthusiasm and, and, and suspense and, and from the looks on people's faces, you understand that. it's plastered. Yeah, all yeah, all exactly. Exactly. So, uh, information is not exclusive anymore. We call about, we talk about the digital divide, where some part of some some part of the some sections of the society hoard information while it's not given away to the other part. But now it's 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 an open book. Yes, yes and and everybody has ac access to all the required information. Uh, another another very interesting part is. Previously, we used to have newspapers delivered uh, uh, to our houses, and this newspaper would be having a particular political inclination. Right. Yeah. So, right. so what happens is you get to be fed this particular paradigm about what's happening in the world, their what's happening in the country. Viewpoints. Exactly yes. their viewpoints. But now, uh, students and kids get to have a very balanced uh, perspective on what's happening, because on social media, as long as you uh, befriend people from all sections of the society, you hear uh, d different versions of what has happened. You understand things from different perspectives, which help our children to have a very balanced viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, that's about general learning, but uh, when it comes to uh, um, um, academic uh, uh, orientation in particular, I think uh, we just cannot f neglect the, the profound impact of social media. As, as we said in the last session, uh, in the West, increasingly people are using Facebook and Twitter and Instagram to facilitate learning because they understand that students have taken to this platform in a big way and this is an integral part of the classrooms now mm. uh, and you cannot uh, uh, neglect it. You know I was mentioning you've got Facebook groups for students, project work is being done online, uh, Twitter is used extensively to communicate 
So uh, instead of elaborating on this, what we have is we have a, a, a video for you. Uh, uh, we have a short video which in general talks about the, the new trends of using social media in the classroom with particular reference to Twitter because Twitter is a very easy to use, uh, uh, um, uh, a light medium which does not uh, use extensive bandwidth so uh, it can be used even with moderate speeds that we have. Uh, so uh, I request the studio to, to play the short video and uh, please sit back and enjoy this. Education leaders are making big changes, building 21st century skills, using enabling technologies and personalising learning to engage students in diverse and creative ways. In South Korea, schools are switching to digital textbooks so students can study anytime and anywhere with online hours recognised as school attendance. In Denmark, students are using the internet while taking exams. They can access any site they like, even Facebook, as long as they don't message each other or use email. In the USA, ultra-personalised learning approaches allow students to create their own individual schedules. Their interests and performance are logged daily to generate playlists of learning options, with teachers' time freed up to mentor and supervise students. Learning can happen anywhere and everywhere. That's why some Australian schools are pushing learning beyond school walls, where internships with local organisations are a fundamental part of each student's learning plan. Distance learning programs are connecting seriously disengaged students with online learning communities and personal mentors to help them rediscover their love for learning. Technology has changed how we communicate, particularly with mobile devices and social media. It is important students know how to utilize these tools in school and as citizens of the digital world. The growing popularity of social media sites like Twitter adds a new way to engage students in the classroom. In today's lesson, students in Mr. Cassidy's class are using Twitter in a number of different capacities. Students use different forms of social media for discussion questions. The teacher will post a question with a unique hashtag and students can respond directly to him and to each other. This has greatly increased class participation and helps students who might hesitate in class find their voice. For example, during an in-class debate, all students were able to participate by tweeting questions and comments. This simulated a real live debate and gave students a unique experience. Twitter is also used to enhance assignments. Students post responses to in-class readings and discuss aspects of the novel without disrupting other students' reading time. Outside of class, Twitter is used to keep students updated on tests and due dates, and it allows students to continue discussing topics from class. As you can see, the use of social media and technology in the classroom has increased student participation and enhanced learning. Teaching students how to properly use social media will help prepare them for college, career, and citizenship. Doctor, you had mentioned about um, using Facebook in academics. Um, uh, could you suggest a few uh, Facebook pages which can be used for this? Oh yes, I think uh, parents should definitely know about these Facebook pages. Uh, uh, the first one is, is the TED Facebook page. Mm. Now, uh, TED has got an extensive collection, uh, an el a huge collection of videos which can really inspire students. There are videos on umpteen number of topics. There are TED channels for parents, there are TED channels for teachers, for, for students as well. Probably I think every day a new video is added. These are uh, 12 to 18 minutes videos uh, spoken uh, by leading experts um, um, across domains in the world. So I, I would really encourage parents to take a look at it and also to, uh, to motivate their kids to, uh, to at least check out the, the interesting video threads and, 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 and the discussions that happen under each thread. Um, well, I if they're interested in enhancing their English language mm -hmm. skills, uh, you have uh, a beautiful Facebook page from the British Council where again you have videos and pronunciations, you've got videos on, on, on proper usage of English. That's uh, a Facebook page. There's a Facebook British page, Council. exactly. There's a Facebook page. Previously they used to have an extensive portal, but mm -hmm. now they've shifted to the Facebook page because it facilitates the conversation mm -hmm. and there are a lot of students who are taking part in the discussions there. Right. Um, I would also like to uh, particularly recommend Khan Academy. Uh, Khan Academy, uh, this is not just for students, though students are the biggest users of this, of this page. 
uh, uh, any mathematical concept, any any statistical concept that you want to know, you know, uh, why is sine theta called sine theta, or how do you apply trigonometry in real life? H has geometry got any relevance in, in in the practical problems that we have? Khan Academy has got small videos explaining these concepts in details, and and it's very student friendly as well. So um, I'm sure students will find it much more interesting than what a teacher in class or even a tuition teacher can explain to them. So these are some of, again, the NASA Facebook page uh, 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 highlighting a lot of breakthrough inventions and discoveries in the field of science. So there are elaborate uh, uh, number of, there are many uh, uh, videos um, and, and Facebook pages available. Uh, parents can, of course, Google and ask for Facebook pages for students and Facebook pages for parents. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, uh, I think a whole bouquet of information would be available there. I remember using the Khan Academy when we got during our doctoral research when we got stuck with the statistics. Exactly, uh, chapters, exactly, right? exactly. And the way it's designed, you know, e even if somebody doesn't have even the rudimentary awareness about a hmm. subject, because they've got videos that progress in terms of uh, intensity. So you, you can start at a very basic level and then go all the way till you yeah, become we a got master. Through in statistics, exactly, right? e e exactly. I'm sure the students will find it handy as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Doctor, any other area where we can give social media a clean chip, uh, where it can be useful? Yeah, um, I, w I want to particularly talk about two or three uh, uh, other areas. One is about relationships and empathy. Uh, uh, previously, you know, you, you pass out from school and college and then you cut your links with your old friends, okay? And, uh, but nowadays, they remain friends for life. Because thanks to social media, you are in touch and, and you, you maintain contact while the guy gets into a job, starts a family, right. and then probably even uh, retires. You know, that's going to happen very soon. Exactly, yeah. with the daily activities. Uh, so you, you, you maintain your friends for life. Uh, you, you just don't cut them off. Plus, you know, there's something. Uh, previously, I never used to remember my aunt's birthday or my uncle's uh, wedding anniversary. Now, you know, kids have the opportunity to be reminded of major events in the lives of their loved ones, and that prompts them to, to put in a comment, and, and the relationship stays on for a much Wonder more longer time. So, yeah. so definitely, that is there. Uh, so it's, it's actually led to a lot of empathy, and uh, uh, relationships have got stronger because mm -hmm. of uh, social media. Uh, another thing that I really want to talk about is the opportunity for self-expression. Okay, previously if a student does well in, in class, who knows about it? You know, uh, probably the teacher knows, the classmates know and the parent knows. But now thankfully parents are using social media to showcase the talents and the passions of the children. Not just the classroom achievements, but what they achieve even Ex outside Ex school, exactly. the school comes to know about it. Very, uh, very true, very true, you know, especially if you've befriended your teachers and your child uh, does well in some extracurricular domain, you know, the, f the certificate is posted online, the photograph is posted online, everybody in the family comes together. So, uh, uh, we, we, are, we are right now in the middle of a research trying to understand the childhood factors that affect a person's success in later life. And, and, and one thing that is clearly coming out is a string of successes that you have early on and the positive feedback that you receive can really help in making success a habit for children. So social media can be used extensively for that. Right. Uh, children can express themselves and children can bask in the glory that they get, uh, especially when the loved ones come and uh, uh, can, exactly. Yes. So self-expression, you know, um, yeah. even if someone is not very comfortable expressing oneself outside, self-expression uh, yes, helps. Absolutely, yeah. because I can personally vouch for the fact that um, it gives a brilliant platform for uh, people who are shy, who are uh, introverted, uh, who are not very outspoken to connect with the world out there. Very true. Because uh, they can sit in the comforts of their home and discuss matters with people of all ages true, uh, true. without feeling anxious or uh, uncomfortable about true, it. True, true. A lot of people yeah. are quite uh, uh, uncomfortable having face-to-face -to -face conversations. So yes. so active yeah. on social media. Very true. Especially oh, you've, you've noticed that, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. People are introverted. People are sometimes shy of uh, uh, engaging in conversations actively outside. For them, social media is a wonderful platform to express themselves and to get appreciated now uh, before we get into the strategies uh, we need to know why our kids especially the teenagers are spending so much time on social media actually they are not addicted to social media they are addicted to each other because in today's world uh, we over let's accept it we overburden them with quite a lot of activities the uh, extracurricular activities the sports uh, 
community service competitions that they have to participate in. Uh, all this on top of a fiercely competent academic process. So what, uh, we leave them with very little time to interact and uh, re relax and rest with their friends. Um, when we say uh, put down your phone, that shouldn't mean uh, you should go to your room and stay alone because we are closing a door in front of them but we have a moral responsibility to open another at least one door in front of them through which they can interact and socialize. See, uh, in today's age, as parents of today's age, we do not let them explore outdoors. We do not uh, allow them to roam around freely or spend some time at their friend's place down the lane. So um, actually by doing this, we are neglecting their need to interact and socialize with people of mm -hmm. different age groups. True. What are your thoughts on this? I'm so happy that you started the discussion on, on, on strategies by mentioning this particular point. Hmm. Uh, dear parents, we need to understand this. This is not just about children, but also about adults. Y if you have a particular habit, okay, let's say it could be uh, looking at your phone every now and then, it could be smoking, it could be uh, binge eating, whatever. Uh, what we have to understand is there are certain triggers, okay, triggers around you. Uh, that prompts the body to get into this, we call it a habit loop, because mm -hmm. most of the time it happens unconsciously. Because yeah. when it becomes a habit, it happens unconsciously. So there are a lot of triggers. It could be a particular time, uh, a, a particular room, a particular mood, uh, a meeting somebody. So this triggers the, the habit. Mm -hmm. and, and then you indulge in the habit and you get some benefit out of it. Okay, it could be, um, you know, some new information as in social media, uh, interacting with a friend, putting a comment. Now, when this becomes a habit, you cannot change this habit by telling people to, to stay away from social media. Habits cannot be changed like that. Now, that's an extensive subject. We'll talk about it you sometime later. It on and off. Exactly. Yeah. You cannot switch because it gets hard coded. You have to replace your habit with something else. Hmm. Okay, right. so if, if if even for smoking, you know what 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 psychologists what we are trying to help people to do is, uh, you know the reward that you get from smoking, we we try to provide another source where you get the same reward. Okay, that's why you've got these nicotine uh, hmm. uh, uh, chewing chew, gum chew and gums. stuff like that. Uh, so you you just cannot say uh, uh, this habit is bad for you. Uh, move away from social media or or, or don't touch that phone because it's not going to work you will definitely have to provide an alternate yes, task yes, for the children yes. to do, an alternate uh, kind of engagement that the, that the children can, can get into. So, so how can you take children off social media? The number one strategy would be to encourage their passions and talents. Okay? If they're good at photography, if they're good at painting, if they're good at poetry, if they're good at reading, encourage them, motivate them and support them to do more of that. That would be the number one strategy. Mm. And, and what we have found uh, uh, is that Having rituals at home is one way to, to develop your children in a very effective manner. Uh, now, what are some of the rituals that, that you can have? Going for shopping together okay. is a ritual. A ritual is something that you do on a continuous basis. Don't just leave your kids at home and then uh, and say we're going shopping. You, know, you need to take them together along with you. Having dinner, I'm sure we, we have discussed this in detail, but sitting across the table and, and having food together, that's another ritual. Cleaning the, the, the table up, okay, and doing the, 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 the plates, the dishes after that, that could be another uh, ritual. Uh, uh, praying together could be another very effective ritual. Having board games, uh, uh, spending time playing board games, that could be another ritual. So, so we need to have these rituals. And that's the only way you can wean children away from social media. You know, if, if for a child, uh, uh, Facebook is, is, is the only parent and the only friend, and it would be right. cruel, it would be really cruel to, <laughs> to, to take it away from them. You know, yeah. On that note, shall we take a quick break? Uh, would you want to take a break right now? For, perfect. So, uh, so we'll take a small break and, and... We'll see you at the other end of the break. Exactly. Where we'll definitely discuss more strategies, effective practical strategies on how to maximize the benefits of social media after the break.